Hi, welcome to Thinking in Abstract. I'm your host, Caitlin Laws. In the second episode, I will be joined by a guest, Kit, and we will be discussing the piece Composition 4 by Vasily Kandinsky from 1911. Before we get started with the episode, I'm going to briefly describe what the piece looks like for those who cannot immediately see the piece as they are listening. Starting from the left side of the piece, we see what almost looks like a mountainous figure to the bottom left. Above this seems to be bold lines. Um, as you rise to the top of the image, the lines are intersecting and becoming more curved and dynamic as they seem to be battling against one another. As you move to the right side, we start seeing a geometric shape. Holding some sort of weapon. And then once you look fully to the right of this, there seems to be another mountainous shape but then below it, we see resting figures. The sky goes through a variety of different colors, but all the colors within this image are bold, saturated colors, um, often blues and reds. Feel free to look at the image as we go along, but hopefully this description will help you as we go. So, hi, I'm here with Kit. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> um, we're talking about Vasily Kandinsky, Composition 4 from 1911. Um, so, before we even talk about this piece, let's let's talk about ourselves. Wonderful. A little bit. <laughs> um, so, would you like to tell me a little bit about your experiences with art? And so, that kind of thing? Um, I'm an abstract artist, luckily. <laughs> um, otherwise, I wouldn't have known anything about what we're talking <laughs> about but um I I mean other than like regular like high school art classes I took a um three week like removed summer art program up in Sweetbriar Virginia called Blur mm. and up there we did um we had three weeks of basically it was like we had Sundays off and every day we had three hours of studio time in two different studios mm. so I did a lot of ceramics and a lot of studio Art, and that's kind yeah. of how I fell into abstract art and the whole thing. I'm not like classically trained or anything. I just kind of like did it, and then I was like, yeah. "Oh, this is I'm doing abstract art now." Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Um, but you know, I I really like um, I love abstract art. Obviously, I consume a lot of like media with abstract art, yeah. um, and I like street art and mixed media sculpture and stuff like that. So okay, that's, that's kind of my realm of interest. Yeah. <laughs> It's very cool, and it aligns, you know, very perfectly with this, what yeah. we're talking about, and especially, I think, this episode. Um, my experiences with art. Um, <laughs> so, I'm going to talk about me for a little bit. Uh, <laughs> um, right now, I'm in a drawing one class, and that's not really abstract art, because yeah. it's very much about, like, you know, kind of getting reality onto a yeah, yeah. 2D medium, that kind of thing. Um, Which and that, is something that I cannot do, so that's why, that's part of the reason why I do abstract, is just that I like, I don't know, I just, I don't, well, I didn't put a lot of effort into drawing, mm -hmm. but I'm just not good at it, <laughs> so, so that's kind of where, like, the whole abstract thing came yeah. from, for me at least. Um, and I think there's a lot of different ways that people can get to abstract, like, a lot yeah. of the first ones that, like, these early abstract artists I've been finding were, like, you know, some kind of, you know, really good classical painter or something yeah. like that. And then they're like, actually, this is kind of boring. I'm going to do abstract now. Yeah. Or like, um, this this isn't like the message I'm trying to spread around. I want everybody to understand this. So I'm yeah. going to make it, like, break it down. And then everybody's like, what are you talking about? Yeah. I don't get it. You're like, I'm going to make everybody understand. And then you start yeah. doing abstract art and they're like, what is this? <laughs> Who did this? <laughs> Um, yeah, that's that's at least what happened in my experience because yeah. I was like I like convey like a very specific message, but like art can also be interpreted in as you know infinitely many ways. Yeah. So everybody's like, oh, this means this, and I'm like, actually, it does mean this, but yeah. that's a good interpretation, and I will yeah. accept it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I think you know, oh, for a long time, I wasn't like super big on abstract art. I was definitely like one of those people of the mind that was like, abstract art who? I yeah, I used to think like that too. Actually, I yeah. like when I was like little, I was like, abstract art is for people who can't draw. Yeah. And here I am, years later, can't draw and do abstract <laughs> art. <laughs> but like you know, whatever, yeah. poetic justice, I guess. Yeah. Um, but I really got into it because like <coughs> my mom, she's always really liked abstract art. Mm -hmm. Um. 
And I, I would say she was one of the only people that I really talked to who really liked and appreciated abstract yeah. art. So we would, um, when I started dragging my parents to art museums, <laughs> um, my mom, she definitely, like, was more attracted to the abstract art yeah. there. So she'd be like, look how beautiful it is. And I was like, I don't see it. Yeah. Excuse you, ma'am. It's like, it's just paint on a canvas. Yeah. It's like, yes, all art is paint, paint on, on a, a canvas. canvas. <laughs> yeah, she'd be like, well, I really like the colors. Or, like, it just makes me feel nice. And yeah. I was like, oh, yeah, like... <laughs> art doesn't have to be like some like huge meaningful thing and a lot of time it is but it yeah. can be like you can appreciate it on the level of it makes me feel nice yeah like that's yeah like that's I feel like a lot of purpose of art is to evoke emotion and that's yeah. what like at least in like my experience personally like I base my art off of emotion like pure emotion that I yeah. put on the canvas so like that's what I think of when I look at that like piece that I did like that's just at least that's how it is yeah. for me I know it's not like that for everybody but I'm not I'm also not classically trained so yeah. like <laughs> who knows <laughs> um, but I think that's kind of like I've noticed in a lot of this when I first started looking into it at least for Vasily Kandinsky is like as far as I found it's like when he's doing this art even his goal is to try and help people like understand and mm-hmm. like you know reach a lot of people and to be able to do that you have to have like create an emotional connection I think with everybody so a lot of that abstract art is creating that like emotional connection or something like that no yeah that makes sense (laughs) yeah Um, Yeah. I also have one here what kind you enjoy the most yeah and I know Um, we talked about that a little bit before so if you want to talk about it yeah I really like I mean like I said before I really enjoy obviously abstract because that's like what I do yeah and um (laughs) and I really I don't like all street art because some of it, I just, it's not my taste. Yeah. But I enjoy, like, the effort and that goes into it. Like, especially when it becomes, like, a movement. Like, something like Banksy yeah. or, like, the Obey movement or whatever mm-hmm. before it became an obnoxious clothing brand. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, like, the like the effort it takes to put out street art in such, like, a, like a large quantity, like, really fast and not get caught or yeah. arrested, like, is so like interesting to me especially because it's so like it happens so fast all those street artists got popular like yeah like overnight and like yeah. you know and going off of that like I really enjoy um I like some of Banksy's installation pieces like um but obviously he's Banksy so he can be kind of pretentious but <laughs> <laughs> but I you know I really um some of his stuff is really interesting and I like like the visual yeah. aspect of it even like you know not I don't really sit around and think about Banksy that often, yeah. but, like, you know, and, um, and obviously, like, um, like, I like mixed media sculpture just because it's, yeah. like, installation pieces and stuff that's, like, really nice to, like, look at that, like, comes to the eye, and, um, and, you know, stuff like that. I like, yeah. I like a lot of texture in paintings, yeah. like, I like, like, not necessarily, like, to the point where I would reach out and touch it, but, like, I like the way the texture looks. Yeah. Like, if you see a lot of oil later, layered onto a canvas, you can tell it's, like, if you touched it, it would be, like, like, yeah, like a really good texture. It. Yeah. Um, and obviously, you know, the normal, like, I, I really like Van Gogh. I like his use of color a lot yeah. and stuff like that, but, um, because he's, like, borderline abstract, which I really enjoy. Like, yeah. it's, like, almost there, but not quite, like, <laughs> um, so, yeah. Yeah. And then I would say, I, I wouldn't say you know, um, abstract art is definitely, like, my favorite or anything, or have any particular favorite, but that's why I'm doing this now, is so I can explore a lot more of it. There is a lot to explore with abstract art. It's so, like, and there's just so much, and, like, nothing's really specific, which is pure irony, because it's abstract (laughs) art, but, like, you know, like, there's nothing really that's, like, concrete, like, this is, like, well, I mean, you could look at something and be, like, this is abstract art, like, it's not you know, there's not, like, a certain technique like there would be with landscapes or stuff like that to be, yeah. like, this is how you paint abstract art. Like, it's all so different. Yeah. And that's part of the reason why I love it so much. Like, I, like I said, I'm not classically trained. I just kind of, like, do mm-hmm. stuff. Like, <laughs> like I don't really have, I don't really, well, I have a process, but, like, yeah. not, like, anything really specific because I just go and I do it and yeah. that's it. Like, Which I think is becoming a lot more common with, like, artists that yeah. I've seen is, like, there's not as many classically trained I think Mm -hmm. um when I'm like looking into stuff because if you like when I've been doing it I know I'm not actually like trained in art or anything like that I this is actually like beyond elementary school art classes Mm -hmm. um this art class I'm now taking in my senior year of high school yeah exactly is my my first drawing yeah your first first art training yeah um everything else I've learned is like self-taught art Which I think is actually, like, more and more common, and Mm -hmm. I think even some people are saying, like, people who have gone to art school because of 
the internet and media and stuff, they're just like, yeah, I just... I mean, you're going to learn a lot of the same stuff online because of the tools and resources that you can find for free or for, like, $5 instead of, like, an entire college tuition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, So I think it's becoming more common for people who are interested in art and may not have the money to pursue it, like, through a self-taught means. No, yeah, that makes sense. And there's, it's good, too, that there's a lot of, like, especially now when we live in, like, the internet age, there's a lot of alternative stuff that you can use, even when it comes to, like, art supplies you can get. Like, cheap stuff on Amazon yeah. and have it be just as good as, you know, like, you could get cheap markers from Amazon and have them be just as good as Copics, like, yeah. which is, you know, a good, it gives means to people who wouldn't normally have means to be able to create, which is yeah. never a bad thing, because, I mean, you want people to create all the time, yeah. it's, you know, it's good, it's a good thing, yeah. so. <laughs> and I think it's helped a lot with the outpush of, like, how long it takes to produce new and different yeah. experimental types of media, because I think, you know, before, when we're looking at eras, like, this was... The guy we're about to talk about, he lived from, like, 1866 to 1944. Yeah. So, like, way back in those days, of course, there's experimental art, but I think, you know, it takes a lot longer to get to that point where you're experimenting. But now, because everything's online, everybody's just like, oh, that inspires me, but I want to try it my way and do a bunch of different stuff. And I think, yeah, I think especially at the time, like, if you're thinking, like, the early 1900s, like this piece is from 1911 like it is experimental because like um I mean I don't from what I remember abstract didn't really become like a really big thing until like the 50s right the actual Mm -hmm. like that we're starting and looking at we're Vasily Kandinsky he's like one of the first ones so it's definitely you know this is one and when it starts and then when we're talking about just when art gets when it starts deviating from the norm Mm -hmm. that's just I would say um you know, like, 1900s is when we start seeing a lot of that deviation in terms of understanding it and not just being, like, different colors than normal. Okay. So now let's, I guess now we can talk a little bit about the painting now that we talked yeah. a lot about, like, ourselves, like art. <laughs> and, like, and, like, regular like, art. Yeah, <laughs> we talked about a whole lot of things at this point. Um, okay, so what I figured we'd start off with is we each say one or two things that we like about the piece. Okay. Um, and I'll let you go first. Yeah, okay. So um, I remember looking at this last night while I was doing my notes, and I don't even, like, at first I didn't even process, like, the lines there. Yeah. It wasn't even the first thing I noticed. I, like, I saw, like, the color and stuff like that. Yeah. Like, it's how saturated it is. And um, and I think it kind of conveys, like, you know, I don't for some reason, like, when I – when adrenaline comes to mind, I think of yeah. things being really, like, saturated. Because, saturated, yeah. like, you're, it's so intense that you just see, like, everything. Oh, definitely. And that's kind of what I felt with part of this piece. And, like, especially, like, I found my eye, like, drawn up to the um, upper right corner. Yeah. With that little, like, sun shape with the, yeah. like, kind of dark um, garnet and the orange and the yellow. That's kind of where I, like, where my yeah. eye landed while I was looking at it. And then I kind of drew down through, like, the rest of the painting. Yeah, definitely. Because I would say when I first looked at it, too, like... Um, my next thing is lines but before I get to it that Mm -hmm. was definitely the first thing like your eyes aren't immediately drawn into the lines of the piece because it's kind of like they're there but they don't they aren't the most empowering like first thing that you look at like and like they are bold lines but the color is so saturated that it's not the first thing you notice yeah you're definitely looking at at, like the colors and stuff because it's what draws your eyes because they're so bright Mm -hmm. the the blacks almost seem to like fade into the bit background a little yeah. bit because of that. Even though the that. background is that, like, green yeah, color green. is still, like, yeah. so there. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Especially, like, that blue that, it's, like, the first thing that, like, my eyes are drawn to mm-hmm. is that, like, saturated blue. Yeah. And then from there, you know, my eyes kind of spread out. Like, there's a rainbow in the um, yeah. left, on the left side that you kind of notice over there. Then mm-hmm. you have, like, yeah, you just have lots of saturated colors that, yeah. are, that are very cool and I think very interesting to the piece. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the first thing I noticed was the lines. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, not the first thing, but definitely something I liked about it was the lines. Yeah. Um, because they change a lot throughout the course of the piece. Yeah. Um, which I, when you look, first look at it, I thought it was really interesting because it starts off and they're like really curvy and intersected. Mm-hmm. And then as it kind of goes through, they're like more geometric and yeah. then like a bit more like calmer and they're not, there's not as many lines, I yeah. would say, at least not bold lines um and they're very like dynamic dynamic and they fill up the space because even though the colors are the first thing that you're looking at and that fill up a lot of the space Mm -hmm. I'd say the next thing is those lines yeah they are like bold enough and like especially if you're looking because like now I'm looking at it from like left to right like there's a lot of 
it kind of transitions from like these like rough kind of like jagged yeah frantic looking lines to like transitioning into like a smooth like it almost looks like mountains yeah on the other side especially like yeah. blending with the color it looks like so like mountain I, peaks. yeah there's like definitely almost a story to it mm-hmm. because it's going from that harsh intersecting dark lines yeah becoming a bit more calmer and almost like a more natural mm-hmm. area almost yeah and then is there anything else that you like I, yeah. yeah I just like the way the colors are because like I yeah in my like in my art I focus a lot on like my color usage and like yeah. what like how I put my colors together and I like sometimes it's always it's almost better to have like instead of sticking like a like a very strict certain color palette like this painting uses a lot of colors but they're also all kind of on the more like darker saturated side yeah which is kind of brings it all together because like if it was it's not all over the place yeah. by any means. Like, it's not. Yeah. But it's still just a lot of colors, which I, yeah. I don't know. It's just, it makes it kind of, like, pleasing to the eye, I guess. Yeah. That's what I really like. And I think it's also, like, colors are pretty concentrated because, I mean, with blue, there, it's kind of used in a couple places. But when you look at it, it feels like blue is, like, concentrated in the middle. Mm-hmm. And then um, to the side, the colors are a bit They're more sparse to the left. And then, mm-hmm. you know, to the right, there's a bit more, like, yellow and red, um, yeah. just concentrated. Um and I noticed that with the color. Um, I also like the movement of the piece because mm-hmm. that kind of goes like hand in hand with the lines that I was talking about and yeah. the way they change. Um, but, you know, as you're going from that left to right, you know, the lines change so much and there's definitely like movement to it. Like it mm-hmm. feels, especially on that left side, it feels like it is in the middle of like some kind of action when you look at yeah, it. Yeah, that's what I was thinking about too because it's like, it's very like, jagged well it's not like the lines aren't necessarily like jagged but especially down there on like that like kind of rifle looking shape in the corner it's very like I don't know it has like a very like frantic sort of like feel to it that's what I think when I look at it it yes definitely um so yeah that's some of the stuff I like yeah some stuff you like about (laughs) it me too yeah (laughs) um and this isn't so much like a history of it but this is like when I was researching, this is what I found out about, yeah. like, what Kandinsky meant when he was doing this piece, like, what his, like, what he meant to do with it. So, as we've been talking about with the lines and the movement and, mm-hmm. you know, the way the colors go from a bit more sporadic to, like, calmer on the other side, left yeah. to right, um, it's because it's meant to show kind of, like, a story of a war happening mm-hmm. and then eventually becoming, like, a calmer thing, like, yeah, a more makes, peaceful afterwards. That definitely makes sense, um, like, just looking at it. <laughs> yeah. Because, you know, on that left side with all the lines and the franticness of it, that's mm-hmm. the war. That's where, um, you know, everybody's, like, fighting with their weapons and stuff. Yeah. And then as you look into the middle, that's supposed to be, like, a, when I was looking into it, I believe it's, like, a castle-type shape. It's, mm-hmm. like, you know, one of those buildings of power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, And then if you look down, those are, I believe it's supposed to be, like, soldiers holding their, like, weapons. Yeah. Um. It's it, it's not necessarily a spike or a spear or anything, but it's just supposed to be, like, a weapon as far yeah. as I can tell. Um, and then as you look at the right, that's when everything has finally calmed down after the war. And mm-hmm. you see um, these people kind of, like, resting. Yeah. Um, and that's them, like, resting after the war and, like, a more natural, like, mountainous kind of mm-hmm. setting where everything's a lot calmer. The sun is, like, kind of almost... Almost kind of like it's setting, honestly. Yeah. Um, because everything is. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's what I found out. That mm. that was kind of his intention behind the yeah. piece is kind of showing like the war and, um, you know what these people are fighting for, and then the peace and calm yeah. that comes after any war. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. That's that's really interesting, and I think like, I feel like finding out the interpretation the artist had. Yeah. Is um like, also kind of adds to the way you look at the painting, because now yeah. I'm looking at it differently than I would be, than I was, like, a few minutes ago yeah. before I knew that stuff. <laughs> yeah. Because I I feel like with any piece, and this is generally, I think, the intention, mm-hmm. well, not generally, always, the art, mm-hmm. but I think a lot of the time the intention with that abstract art, when you're breaking it down to these small things, um, people bring their own personal interpretation yeah. with almost any art, but especially abstract art, where it's, like, they bring to the plate, you know, what they're feeling or what they've lived through. Yeah. And that's what impacts the piece. Yeah, because it's not like, I mean, it's not like a landscape portrait. You can't look at that and say, that is some mountains and a river. Yeah. Like, you know, abstract is different to every person who looks at it. Yeah. Especially because, I don't know, this is going to sound dorky, but like, <laughs> you know, considering everybody's eyes and their brain processes stuff in different ways, my paintings may not look the same to someone else. No, so that's totally true. That yeah. could also be part of it, I think. 
um, yeah. which is cool to relate it back into, like, science stuff, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> which, um, the next thing I was even going to talk about was, you know, personal history and stuff, mm-hmm. like, Kandinsky and whatnot. Yeah. Um, but one of the things that I found was that he had synesthesia. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, which kind of goes along with you saying, like, how people's brains and just how they think is mm-hmm. different. And that was a lot – that was really impactful, I think, for his art and his thought processes because mm-hmm. – um, well, the kind that he had was he heard music and saw colors, mm-hmm. um, which I think is one of the more common ones. Yeah, at least that's the so. one that you hear about a lot yeah. more. Um, so he, with his abstract art, he wanted to achieve some kind of like transcendence where it was like people saw, like if people looked at his art, they would be able to go you know, beyond like, this is America or this is a painting of a place in America or a place in India or a place in Africa or or anything like that um, and just bring their personal experiences and Mm -hmm. their own human connections to the art. Yeah. Um, So this was his kind of way of, you know, coming to that transcendence. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he thought music was the highest level of transcendence, which makes sense because of (laughs) the way he, like, thought and heard and saw things. Um, So to him, this is a way of, kind of bringing art to that level that of what he yeah. was seeing and hoping others could achieve and understand that yeah yeah no I know and I yeah and for me personally like I use music a lot when I paint yeah like I always ha- I can't paint with if, if I'm not listening to music like it's such a big part of like what um what like I what I yeah. do because I most of the time if I'm if I do a painting it's for like a specific person so like I will like think of somebody and I'll be like okay like what do I think of Mm -hmm. like what colors do I associate with them what kind of like what kind of like lines and kind of movement do I think of when I think of them and um and that's kind of what I put into color wise and then after that the music music I listen to either associating with the person or how I feel dictates what I put onto the canvas definitely so that's like a huge thing for like, with what I do, so I understand that, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, so, we can talk a little bit about the history of it, too. Mm-hmm. Um, so, <laughs> it would seem that about around this time period, we have um, the Russian Revolution. <laughs> I was right. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, that was, like, with the overthrow of power. That actually makes a lot of sense in context of um, the war we're seeing yeah. <laughs> in this piece. Um right. I could definitely see how a rush entire revolution in your country yeah. would come to impact the pieces you're creating, especially if this is a piece about war and then conflict know, that, and that then, conflict and then yeah, peace yeah. after. If there's a revolution happening and then this is, you know, 1911, yeah. three Ooh. years after that, we see the World War. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. I was yeah. saying, yeah, 1905 revolution and bloody Sunday. So that's yeah. definitely, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because so. we're looking at this time period, like, we're looking not too long after the revolution and then straight into, like, World War I. World War I. Yeah. Um, so that is going to be a very conflicting time yeah. in your personal history. Um, so, yeah, that would definitely impact this piece because we're seeing bad stuff. I would say categorically bad things <laughs> yeah, happening. Objectively. In the but yeah, cool. that's that's Kandinsky. That's Kandinsky. Yeah. Um, now yeah. I'll ask you, do you think that, you know, what is happening in the world affects the art you create? Um, or just like any political events or just I anything mean, like that? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> I I try not to let stuff affect me, but at the same yeah. time I have to be in a certain headspace. So, to me, it affects me a certain extent, but not the pieces that I do. Yeah. Because of the, like, nature of them, I guess. Yeah. Um, Because, I mean, I guess since I'm a little bit of an artist, um, (laughs) I would definitely say I definitely have kind of a similar thing where it's, if I'm feeling, like, too stressed or anything like that, Mm -hmm. sometimes I can feel like I can't do that. I can't do art. And, like, there's a block in my brain because it's, like... Oh, there's too many. There's too much stuff. There's, there's too much, much bad stuff. Yeah, there's like, too much. Too many things happening. I can't yeah. even begin to concentrate on what I need to do. Yeah, like, <laughs> because it feels like when there's so many other responsibilities or concerns, mm-hmm. like that is one thing. And then on the other hand, there's sometimes where I'm like, I'm just gonna do it because I need like something. Like I'm so stressed right now. Now I need something that I yeah. know is relaxing almost. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, and I think 
I don't know, some, it's going to be different for every, every person that you talk to, how anything affects their art, (laughs) um, because I think a lot of time different people get different inspiration for their art, yeah, um, in different ways. I yeah. just use different in a lot of... <laughs> in, a, in a lot of <laughs> different ways. <laughs> um, um, but yeah, yeah, like, I don't know. I was just thinking about it and, like, again, bringing up Banksy. Um, <laughs> his art is very... Like, a lot of his street art and the art that he does and the installation pieces are very political. Yeah. So I'm sure that's part of what drives him to do his art. Yeah. And for me personally, like, I don't... I'm not really influenced by, like, political stuff. Just because, like, yeah. I make my art for people and I don't make my art for our president or you know yeah. whatever like I just I just don't want to think I don't want to think about that while I'm doing what I need to do yeah <laughs> like because I'm like I don't I don't deserve to think about you right now I'm not gonna do that <laughs> so I guess in that way it's kind of what is happening does impact what we're doing just yeah. because you know there you have to be in that certain mm-hmm. emotional or mental state to yeah. do it and that will almost always be impacted by yeah definitely everything that's happening yeah. and it doesn't necessarily have to reflect in the art but maybe like when you can create the art yeah 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 so then I guess that kind of leads us into talking a bit about um Kandinsky himself Mm -hmm. because I've mentioned a little bit about him um so of course one of the things that I saw that I mentioned was he was one of the first like purely abstract artists Mm -hmm. um and that you know a lot of people just weren't doing abstract art unsurprisingly (laughs) (laughs) um uh, it's definitely something that was newer towards in the 1900s probably like that late 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 1800s yeah Um, he's one of that one of those abstract artists you know pushing the boundaries of what we know and what we think and how we're going about our art because you know art was starting to get kind of you know people were playing around with it more Mm -hmm. um with colors and stuff and yeah. then he was like you know what i'm just gonna go all the way guys <laughs> he was like let's just he was like you know what we're not gonna take this slow we're just gonna do it yeah we're like, just committing <laughs> now yeah i'm committing to doing like this pictorial kind of yeah. you know stuff um you know take it to the next level mm. and then along with that uh abstract to art was kind of like a spiritual thing for him yeah is what i found out um because you know when i mentioned he believed art it should be on, like, a transcendental level. Yeah. So he saw himself almost, like, a prophet in oh. some ways when it came to, like, art. That's one he, way to look at it. <laughs> <laughs> because he he kind of wanted to spread this message and idea that mm-hmm. art, when you're creating art, you know, we should be trying to get to, like, that transcendental yeah. level. Like, almost like enlightenment, I guess, yeah, right? Yeah, to that yeah. enlightenment. So that way we're not just creating art for, like, necessarily ourselves Mm -hmm. or creating art for, like, the two people who lived through that, your, like, same experience or, like, the five people who live in the same place as you. Mm -hmm. You're creating art for everybody on some level. Mm -hmm. Um, So try and create art, you know, that everybody can look at and relate to, which is why. I think color and, to some level, art. Almost Mm -hmm. everybody, you know, interacts with color. Yeah. Um. Because, I mean, most people, to the exception of, like, some people with, like, who are colorblind. Or blind. Or just blind, (laughs) period. Um, And that goes along with, like, how you see and interpret the world. But Mm -hmm. a good portion of, like, the world's population sees in colors and interacts and experiences colors. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, you grow up over time to see colors come with specific connotations. And then we all have emotions. So then... When you get to abstract art that does play a lot, especially with colors, Mm -hmm. um, it is very not easy but it's very like workable or understandable Mm -hmm. in that sense because you know if you're seeing something with like you know royal purples you're thinking oh that's you know royalty Mm -hmm. is usually some kind of or it's some kind of like value to it or um, something like that or if you're seeing like like huge saturated red colors you're Mm -hmm. thinking like oh my gosh violence Mm -hmm. or you know there's there's just certain connotations with certain colors and because we all we almost all see color and we almost all experience emotion. Yeah. <laughs> because of course there's always some kind of exception, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> when you when you put the two together, it it I think abstract art does become that yeah. like transcendental level of understanding. Yeah. And I think something really good about abstract art like going again back to how the brain works and how it processes stuff, like I, I don't, nobody sees color the same way. Yeah. Which I think is, like, amazing, because, like, somebody else could see my paintings in a completely different way than I yeah. do and feel something completely different out of it. 
and I love to hear the way people look at my paintings because yeah. like it's like I'm like oh that's like that sounds really cool like I'm I'm so glad that you look at it and you think that like it's I just I don't know I always thought it was really interesting that people look at color in so many different ways uh, like and then you know talking about all this kind of stuff is another thing that I learned about Kandinsky while I was doing some mm-hmm. research um with almost every artist I have found including him there's a uh, you know, they go through periods and phases in yeah. art. Um, you know, his, he went through phases where it's, like, fluid and organic mm-hmm. to very geometric to, like, pictorial images mm-hmm. where it's very, you know, something that represents something, like a yeah. line that represents a person that everybody kind of understands. Mm-hmm. Oh, those are people um, type things. So I thought that was, you know, Yeah, no, yeah, that's interesting. I, I don't, I'm trying to think if I went through, like, really any phases. I kind of went through a yellow phase for a little bit. I did, like, one... I did a whole painting for one of my art classes that was just all shades of yellow. And I took uh, yellow rose petals and I stuck them onto the canvas with acrylic paint. That was a fun picture to do. Because we were doing a mixed media project. And she was like, take a thing and, like, put it on an art piece. And I was like, flowers. (laughs) (laughs) And I did the whole thing yellow. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, I definitely went through, like, one of those little, like, yellow phases. I did a lot of stuff in yellow and... That sort of thing. Um, I know. And then we've talked about his synesthesia, you mm-hmm. know, and that goes along with everything we've been saying about, like, interpretation and brain yeah. processes. Um, and then he was – he found um, that getting your unique inner vision across was so important to art, was mm-hmm. that, um, you know, everyone has their way of seeing something, yeah. but what really matters is getting your – you know, your unique interpretation yeah. onto your piece and then Yeah, of course. You know, putting that in there and just letting the world um, see because But yeah, because I think it was under this this understanding that not to get too deep or anything. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, we're talking about abstract yeah. art. <laughs> <laughs> when you um when you understand yourself and you're able to put that up for, you know, into your art and <laughs> interpret it in that way and you're truly showing this like deep level of your self other people will be able to connect to it deeply because they see those deep same like emotional parts Mm -hmm. of themselves reflected no yeah that makes sense makes a lot of sense yeah um and then the last little thing that i have (laughs) noted that i found out about him um was a like a kind of personal history thing and it's Mm -hmm. He embraced his art, like, later in life yeah. um, because he went through, like, all the way. He was, like, a college professor. So he had, wow. like, the equivalent of, like, a master's degree for the time period. Yeah. Um, and he was, like, a teacher in, like, uh, some kind of law, basically, hmm. and he was teaching that. And he was like, hey, guys. Um, I don't like this anymore. <laughs> I don't really <laughs> like this anymore because it was kind of early on he, like, realized – he wasn't super into it, and then yeah. he was like, well, I'm already, like, so far into it, guys, mm-hmm. like, and I mean, I was interested in it, so mm-hmm. I'll keep going, and then he went all the way to being a teacher of it, and then he <laughs> was just like, yeah, I'm good, I'm good here, Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go create art, so that way everybody can, like, understand it, and yeah. stuff. And he's like, okay, like, I'm leaving now, yeah, bye. bye. Like, <laughs> and he was, like, in his 30s when, wow, he was, yeah. when he did that, when he started, and yeah. then and yeah. that, he was like, okay, yeah, this yeah. is what I'm doing now. Um, yeah. But, yeah, mm-hmm. so that's that is, you know, Kandinsky, and that is, you know. Composition 4. Yeah, all that Composition fun stuff. 4. <laughs> and that is us. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Wonderful. Wonderful.